In the cutthroat world of high finance, one bank has ruled them all for over 200 years. Through shrewd deal-making and calculated risks, this empire was built by men who shaped the course of history. We are talking about none other than the king of banking, J.P. Morgan Chase. This is no ordinary bank, it's a dynasty forged through the iron will of visionaries who manipulated the very currents of history. In this video, we're going to dive into the origin story of this banking beast and how it grew to become the king of banking over the last 200 years. There's a lot of fascinating history here, so buckle up! It all started back in the mid-1800s when a man named Junius Spencer Morgan decided to get into banking. He was already pretty wealthy but saw even more opportunity in finance. So, in 1854, Junius teamed up with George Peabody, who ran a successful London-based merchant bank to open the bank's first U.S. office in New York. And just a few years later, Junius brought his son, John Pierpont Morgan, into the business. John's educational journey in finance spanned across several countries. His pursuit began in 1851 when he successfully passed the entrance exam for the English High School of Boston, renowned for its focus on mathematics for careers in commerce. Following his graduation, John's father directed him to Bellerive, a school located in the picturesque Swiss village of La Tour de Pales. Subsequently, his father arranged for him to further hone his skills by enrolling at the University of Göttingen in Germany. This period of international education laid the foundation for John's future financial endeavors and equipped him with a rich multicultural background. And with his father's connections, young John secured a position on Wall Street. But Morgan was determined to make a name for himself. Though his father thought he was too hot-headed for banking, John aimed to prove him wrong. He wanted to show his father and the world that he could become a successful financier in his own right. Even as a young man, John displayed tremendous ambition and a steadfast belief in his own abilities. He was convinced that he had what it took to rise to the top of the banking world, despite his father's doubts. In the 1860s, John saw his opportunity, railroads. At the time, America's rail system was fragmented. Dozens of small railroad companies competed fiercely with each other, slashing rates to attract customers. But John envisioned consolidating the fragmented railroads into cohesive, cooperative monopolies. His strategy? Take over flailing railroad companies, streamline them into efficient behemoths, and merge competitors together to dominate whole regions. John pulled this off so successfully the tactic was named after him. Morganization. Soon he owned one-third of America's railroad tracks. And by 1901, John made headlines brokering the largest business deal in history, buying Andrew Carnegie's steel empire. With that purchase, John founded the United States Steel Corporation. It was valued at $1.4 billion, making it America's first billion-dollar company, and it gave John control of two-thirds of the nation's steel production. John Pierpont Morgan had consolidated enough power and wealth to become one of the most influential businessmen in all of America. The railroads and steel were just the beginning of his empire. Over the next few decades, John would go on to play a pivotal role in the formation of other major companies, like General Electric and AT&T. His talent for combining companies and assembling corporate empires was simply unmatched. Morgan was instrumental in creating several behemoths that are still giants today. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for John. The U.S. economy was shaky in the early 1900s. In 1907, a major crisis hit as people panicked and rushed to withdraw their money from banks. With no central bank at the time, the government turned to John to stop complete collapse. So, here's what he did. John gathered the nation's top bankers in his private library and locked the doors until they came up with a rescue plan. He convinced them to invest heavily to save their competitors from failing. With John's capital injection, public confidence stabilized. Once again, his wheeling and dealing saved the day. But this illustrated how dependent the U.S. economy had become on just one man. People realized things had to change. So the creation of the Federal Reserve soon followed to act as a central bank and prevent future crises. What's remarkable is that this wasn't the only time J.P. Morgan played hero. In the 1890s, 
he had assembled a syndicate of bankers to sell bonds and replenish the government's gold reserves during a previous panic. So, twice in the span of just over a decade, the U.S. government turned to John Pierpont Morgan to rescue the entire financial system from collapse. It really speaks to just how much power and influence he had accumulated. Some criticized these interventions as opportunistic since he profited handsomely. But nonetheless, Morgan earned a reputation as the man who could stabilize markets in times of turmoil. Fast forward to the year 2000. Banks were consolidating again after regulations changed, allowing mergers between commercial and investment banks. Chase Manhattan Bank was a prominent retail bank, while J.P. Morgan excelled in wholesale banking for corporations, but neither wanted to get left behind as megabanks emerged. So, in 2000, Chase CEO Bill Harrison orchestrated a $36 billion stock merger with J.P. Morgan to form one of the largest commercial banks worldwide, J.P. Morgan Chase. Bill Harrison now faced the epic challenge of integrating these two giants into one cohesive entity. Luckily, he wouldn't steer this ship alone for long. This was truly a massive undertaking, combining two complex organizations with centuries of history between them. Employees at both firms worried about losing the unique culture and identity they had cultivated over decades. But Bill Harrison believed scale was paramount in the new era of megabanks, and a merger was the fastest way to gain that scale and remain competitive. So, despite the difficulties of integration, he was determined to make this work. In 2004, Jamie Dimon became president of J.P. Morgan Chase. He came over from Bank One, which J.P. Morgan acquired that year. Dimon had been fired from Citigroup years earlier despite being the heir apparent, but he rapidly turned around the struggling Bank One as its CEO. J.P. Morgan wanted Dimon's leadership and negotiated the merger to bring him on board. Before long, Harrison retired and Dimon stepped into the CEO role in 2005. Jamie Dimon aimed to transform J.P. Morgan Chase into not just the biggest, but also the best bank in America. He had a tremendous appetite for bold, risk-taking and aggressive expansion. Unlike the more cautious Harrison, Dimon was willing to make big bets to turbocharge growth, and his bold approach allowed J.P. Morgan to seize opportunities amid the chaos of the 2008 financial crisis. But even Diamond wasn't perfect. In 2012, the bank lost over $6 billion on risky derivatives trades made in London. This became known as the London Whale Scandal, but he survived the crisis and kept his job as CEO. But the bank was robust enough to absorb the $6 billion loss. And just like the founder J.P. Morgan survived his own crises, Diamond was able to move past this embarrassing failure and continue leading the bank to prosperity. Fast forward to today, and J.P. Morgan Chase remains the largest bank in America with assets of over $4 trillion. It has maintained its conservative approach and built relationships worldwide, and the bank still gets called upon by the government to rescue the financial system in challenging times. Jamie Dimon is still at the helm 16 years after becoming CEO. Under his leadership, J.P. Morgan has strengthened its position as a titan of banking, and expanded into new markets like digital payments. And throughout all the ups and downs, the bank has stayed true to its identity, combining prudence with a hunger for boundless growth. This potent combination originating from its founder, J.P. Morgan, is what has cemented this institution as the king of banking for over 200 years and counting. I don't know about you, but I found this origin story fascinating. It's amazing to see how decisions made back in the 1800s still shape one of the most influential companies today. What's your take on the empire that is J.P. Morgan Chase? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Business Explorer Network for more videos like this. If you enjoyed this notorious origin story, you may also like our video on BlackRock's $10 trillion empire. Thank you for being part of our community, and until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making history.